As for today, we are facing global challenges, starting with the Russian aggression and ending with the North Korea. So the world is in turmoil. First of all, we need to draw the lessons out of our past. Let me remind you that in 1994, Ukraine signed a notorious Budapest Memorandum. This was the memorandum signed by the Ukrainian country when we relinquished the third biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. And co-sponsors of this memorandum, they guaranteed territorial integrity and independence for the state of Ukraine. So what's in the end? In the end, we don't have the nuclear weapon, which is good because we strongly support nuclear non-proliferation. But we lost temporarily Crimea, Donetsk, Lugansk, and Russia, as one of the key co-sponsors of this memorandum, invaded an independent country and, did, and draw the new lines after the Second World War. Uh, and this is, this is a very bad sign for the global community. So the first point is that, first of all, we need to find a common response to all these global threats. There is no other common response rather than strong and not obsolete NATO. So in my humble opinion, it's important for all NATO member states, for the alliance, to be adamant and to say in a very clear way, the time will come and Ukraine will become the NATO member. We will improve the alliance, we will meet the 2% criteria of financing of the alliance, because you, you need to be very focused on this. You have to spend this 2%, because for today my country is spending 5% of its GDP for our security and for our military. Uh, we do understand that not everyone in NATO is happy with an idea to have Ukraine as a member. And let me once again reiterate that uh, in uh, Bucharest in 2008, we asked NATO for the membership action plan. We didn't get it. In the end, what we got? We got Russian aggression against jo Georgia, and we got Russian invasion into Ukraine. So, uh, my take, very strong leadership in the world is needed. Very strong policy of NATO is needed too. Ukraine is to become the NATO member state. On this way, we need to improve our military and we need to approximate Ukrainian standards up to NATO standards. And this is the action plan, which is right now endorsed by my country and this is the only solution for Ukraine and not for only for Ukraine. For it, we are defending the borders of the European Union and of the alliance against the Russian aggression. So it's in our common interests. Ukraine upgraded its military, improved its military, and Ukraine is the only country in Europe that deterred Russian regular military forces. Let me once again reiterate, Ambassador, we are fighting for our independence and for your security. And the third question, you raised, an, you, you said another very important thing, that in case if Ukraine joins NATO, you will buy the problems with Russians. Folks, you have the problems with Russians. Russia meddled into the US elections. Is it true? Yes. Russia interfered into the French elections. Is it true? Yes. Russian aircrafts buzz your aircrafts and your navy. Is it true? Yes. Russia has a huge network buying politicians, media, trying to undermine Western democracy. Is it true? Yes. Russia shot down MH17 with the citizens from the free world. Is it true? Yes. Russia started a number of cyber attacks against NATO member states. Yes. Russia violated the UN Security Charter and tries to undermine the institution. 
Is it true? Yes. So it's in your interest to have Ukraine. The bigger you are, folks, the stronger we are. And last but not least, the sad question, uh, Ambassador Ishinger, that you raised. Whether there is a unity or are you on the same page in the alliance or with the question of Ukrainian membership perspective? And I fully share your take. This is the question mark. It's important for the leadership in the European Union and for the leadership among NATO member states to be more decisive, to be stronger, to take the leadership position. And I kindly request you to send the message to your leaders. Let's make the decision.